Greetings, dapplings, and welcome to Dyson Sphere Program, a new series that we're going to be checking out here on the channel. Now, Dyson Sphere Program is uh, a game whose name more or less sums up exactly what we're going to be doing, and uh, what you're looking at is a Dyson Sphere in uh, in production in the background there. Now, it says what we're going to be aiming to achieve, but doesn't really even come close to doing justice to the means and mechanisms by which we're going to, to reach that point. So what is Dyson Sphere Program? Well, it's an early access game that was released by Youth Cat Studios on my birthday, January the 21st. Pretty much the entirety of the game loop, the, the core game loop, is in place already. And uh, to describe what the game is, well, if you imagine that Factorio and Planetary Annihilation happened to be at the same Indie Games Con at some point, and uh, one thing led to another, a couple of drinks, a wink and a smile, and one passion-filled night, Dyson Sphere Program would be the uh, the perhaps unintended consequence of that uh, that liaison. It is effectively Factorio, but with lots of different planets and star systems. We're going to be taking pristine, uh, pristine environments and turning them into massive factories and hollowing out planets in order to build a massive shell around a star to capture all of its energy. And it is going to be absolutely glorious. As I mentioned, the game is in early access, and there are a few things that aren't in yet. Um, but by and large, the entire, like the main game loop, is all there. There are other. Um, functions and mechanisms which are yet to be added. For example, there are, there is no external threat, but one is planned. It's not always going to be clean sailing. You just show up on a planet and no one is there to stop you from literally hollowing it out. Um, later on, there will be there will be a threat. I'm not exactly sure in what kind of uh, way that's going to to take shape. Additionally, some of the localization is not on point yet. As with most early access games, the, the final polishing stages, they're, they're later down the development roadmap. But with all of that said and done, it is always, always easier to show than to describe. So let's go ahead and jump into a game. And here we are at Galaxy Creation, or rather Cluster Creation, obviously not the full scale of a galaxy. But there's a lot of information here for us. You can hit random a couple of times or put in your own seed. We've got a list of stars down the side, including a black hole. And we always seem to start on a yellow G-type star. You've got the number of stars up here, which you can uh, reduce or increase up to 64. Now, understand that these are solar systems, not, uh, not planetary bodies, so there will be several planets per star in many cases. And you've also got the resource multiplier, which can go anything from half all the way up to infinite. I believe, uh, much like Factorio, where resource nodes themselves are finite, obviously with infinite means that you can just set up a mine and never have to reposition uh, or build another mine. You will always be able to draw um, resources out of that node. It'll never deplete. But with that all said and done, let's uh, go ahead and jump into the game itself and see what Dice Sphere Program has to offer. Now, there is a bit of a backstory to this game that uh, we will touch on a little bit through the uh, the initial tutorial phase where an advisor will kind of hold our hand a little bit. Welcome Speaking to the actual of, universe. Thank you. You may find it's different from our homeland, should you be able to adapt to the laws of physics in a short time. I am your advisor and will help you through this mission. Thank you very much. I'm sure we're going to need the help and oh my lord, look at that. As far as game openings go, this is a solid 11 out of 10. Slingshotting past the star is both awesome and highly cinematic. I approve enormously. Everything here is yours. As one of Cosmo and the pioneer of the Dyson Sphere program, you will explore this cluster step by step. By using the resources here to construct the Dyson Sphere to provide energy for the center brain to maintain homeland, starting from scratch. I have chosen a designated planet for you to start the mission, which has necessary resources for initial development. Now please drive the space capsule to the planet. I believe every time you start, you're going to start on a planet like this and always orbiting a gas giant. Uh, I believe. I, I could uh, I could be wrong about that, but it seems to be the case so far. Now you may be wondering about uh, center, center brain and homeland. In a nutshell, humanity has advanced to the point that they have shed their auger skins and have become entirely digital consciousnesses housed in a massive now virtual simulated universe planet. governed by Centerbrain. But Centerbrain needs more power 
to be able to simulate the universe for an, a rapidly expanding number of, of uh, consciousnesses. And so that is our job. We are now in the real universe. We are probably a human consciousness driving a mechanical suit in order to interact with things. We could also be just an extension of Central this Brain. This is Icarus, a lightweight industrial mecha with powerful functionality. You can use the arrow keys or right-click on the destination to control... Very its Pacific Rim, I must say. In this mission, you will manipulate Icarus to travel beyond the stars and create miracles. Well, that's a good point, actually. Perhaps the uh, perhaps the external threat will end up being Kaiju. Ah, oh, fantastic. Giant robot monster battles. I hope so. Now try to recycle the space capsule. Very well. I will do that straight away. We won't go through the tutorials too much. Again, the localization, as you probably already noticed a little bit with the the, the uh, advisor's uh, dialogue so far, does leave a little bit to be desired. Trees, gravel, Thankfully, it always meantime, gets the gist across. It's just sometimes in a bit of a long roundabout way. By and large, though, it you is always funny rather than annoying that I've experienced capsule. so far. Click the inventory button in the lower right corner of the screen. To open the cabin to view them. Or you can press E. There we go. Just grabbing a little bit of everything around here. And there is a reason for this. Uh, which we will get to in probably not the too distant future. Especially if I continue to run around harvesting everything. Now then. Right now we've got coal and copper next. Oh, we've got a bit of iron over there as well. Okay, that's not too bad. Where we just to rotate the angle of view. Or slide the mouse wheel. To zoom in and out. Hmm, got a bit of stone over there, it looks like, yeah. Now, one of the things that you will notice about this game is it is gorgeous. And everything in the background, I didn't really touch on it before, but you could see the planets as we were moving around the sun. These are the distant stars. We can pin them, so on and so forth. This is an actual orbit. It is simulated. We are on a rotating planet, and, and the sun will rise and fall as uh, as expected. The planet is of probably a decent size, it's just, we're just an enormous mech. Which will be done automatically when complete any technology research. Click okay. the technology tree button at the bottom we shall look right into that screen to open in just the technology a moment. tree and activate a research. One thing to be aware of with orbits is it does matter. Obviously, the, it, the, having having a rotating planet gives us a day-night cycle and that'll, that'll play a part of things like solar power. However, we, we are going to be trying to build something around a star. So being able to shoot things at the general direction of that star is going to be important. Sometimes there will be planets in the way. Eclipses are not uncommon. Uh, and I find that absolutely fascinating. I love it about the game. But let's go ahead and check out the re uh, tech tree. Now we've got to check out electromagnetism very handily. It shows us the main quest line all the way down to uh, completing the mission and, and uh, building the Dyson Sphere itself. And to get there, we're going to have to unlock all kinds of tech all over the place uh, to have the different machines to automate everything. Our mecha is capable of doing quite a lot. It is a massive um, factory machine itself. It can replicate items internally, but it's a lot more efficient to have other machines doing that because they can draw on different power reserves. Over here we have upgrades and typically these are upgrades to the mecha itself or to our general abilities, for example, being able to get information overlays and that sort of stuff. Um, this is not typically stuff that we build ourselves, though, like uh, in, in the environment. Um, things like uh, upgrading our, our drone engines, our the amount of drones we can control, that sort of stuff. But we need to get electromagnetism. Uh, again, the, the, the dialogue is probably going to receive several polishing passes as the game goes through development, but I wouldn't expect this to be something that gets um, worked on as a priority. Usually those kinds of polish passes are done a little bit later in the development cycle. But as you can see here, and, and as you'll see as we go through the other technologies, it always gets the gist across, so it is entirely playable as is. This is going to unlock the wind turbine, the Tesla tower, and the mining machine. So let's uh, get on with that. Now, we need to have these items with us. We can do research internally, which is quite amazing, actually. This, you know, we most of the stuff that we're going to be building is for, for convenience sake rather than for necessity. Though I suspect there are some things that we are, are too large scale for us to build ourselves. But we need a bunch of magnetic coils to finish this research, and we will do the research uh, internally. If we press F, it'll bring up our replicator. And then we've got a nice long replicator queue. We want the magnetic coils. Thankfully, we already have magnets. We already have copper ingots. So let's go ahead 
and get we need 10 of them but we get two per craft so let's go ahead and make five there we go bump and we'll just manufacture these and as we're making them they're already being consumed as well so uh just as soon as they're done there we will have the research complete and while we're waiting on that i will go ahead and i will gather up more of the items around the place this is going to be important as time goes on whenever you've got a spare moment gather it's uh, generally fairly easy there we go now with this we also got you given some of these items machine to achieve or collecting automation pick it up from the inventory or select it on gathering of construction menu to build it very well we will uh, take care of that down here now initially i would say our more important resource is probably going to be iron uh, because we've got a decent amount of copper plates but they use a lot slower than the iron plates as far as i've been able to tell so far but additionally i would like to have a look, little poke around and see if there's some more resources now i believe if we uh, press m i should be able to look at the entire planet in the planet yes, there mode, we go you can hold down the middle mouse button drag rotate the angle of view and hold down the right mouse button drag Indeed. to roll the angle of view press oh, n press n to point to the front to the north pole Indeed. So we can uh, orient the planet. Uh, in the planet view mode, slide see. the mouse wheel to enter the star map mode. Well, you know what, sure, we can do that quickly. There we are. This is our current solar system. There are, it appears, only four planets here. Uh, our current location is considered a planet, though I would have said that's more of a moon orbiting a gas giant, but uh, I'm not going to quibble over that such things. Now let's get uh, back into an, an N in much the same way uh, allows us to orient it, but uh, looking for the resources, I, it seems that this is a decent spot, honestly. We've got copper, iron, stone, coal, and I believe even a crude oil seat. Yeah, okay, so there's pretty much everything that we're going to need right in this little area. So this seems like a good enough place to start. I strongly recommend you make sure you have at least iron and copper in fairly close proximity to each other before you, you start placing down buildings, because you're going to want those in, in fairly large amounts. You can use the R key to rotate the mining machine for covering more veins. Yes. The more veins covered, the faster the ores will be gathered. If you want to ignore grit snapping, Try holding down the shift key. Okay, thank you very much. That's actually incredibly useful. Uh, if you, The more veins you can cover, basically each one of these veins will be mined at a set rate per second. So the more of them you have, the faster the overall building will produce resources. Uh, because it, it doesn't accelerate the, the, the rate of extraction on, on, a sh on a smaller number of veins. It's a set rate no matter what. You can re do some research to improve that, though, I believe. Let's try and grab a decent amount. That's actually a fairly solid amount right there. If we can hold that position. Pop. There we go. Now, no power, but we've got a decent amount of veins available to us. We can have a quick look in here. We're covering eight veins. Uh, that's actually very, very nice. So we've got 170k in those veins. Again, we will be consuming um, these resources. They are finite for us. But let's go ahead and pop down a wind turbine. Now, I can pop the wind turbine right next to this if I really want to, just to uh, provide the power without having to drop the Tesla tower. And there we wind go. Turbine. You have established your first power grid. Not all Great. power facilities has its power supply area. Use the Tesla tower to extend the area of the power grid. Well, I don't really need to do that, but uh, that's fine. We're extracting 171 uh, per minute uh, with that, but obviously we have uh, very quickly reached, uh, we've saturated the storage in the miner itself. But uh, I guess we're going to have to pop this down just to satisfy you. Uh, let's go ahead and try and line them up a little bit. Are you? I, I really do like the grid being visible at all times because you can be very uh, fastidious about your you placement of items. The first power transmission facility. But Tesla I want you to be aware it can carry this out game is spaghetti power conveyor belt the game. And the be prepared for that. Of the power grid. Click on it to view the current power grid information. Very well. But seriously, this is more spaghetti conveyors the game than satisfactory is. And that's saying quite a lot. There we go. Since this is uh, full right now, it's not really got any uh, draw. But as we can see, we're not actually reaching the amount that we need with just one wind turbine. So that should probably be one of the first things that we look to do. Let's try and build a second one. Let's have a look what we're going to need. 
Uh, thankfully, if you click on them, you can just build all of the pre prerequisites. All of these things are, are uh, manufactured themselves, so we need six comp uh, sorry, uh, iron plates. We already got those. One iron gear, which takes an iron plate, and three magnetic coils. We are going to run out of our, um, our copper reasonably soon. So that's something we're going to probably want to try and get going. Now, we're going to need a little bit of copper for the circuit board. We're going to need a bit of copper for the magnetic coils. Let's go ahead and build that right now, just so that we don't get caught off guard with that. And we'll go ahead and build another one uh, as well, because we are definitely going to need a fair old bit of power here. Uh, we could possibly... Do we have enough to get a, another one of these? No, sadly. But that's fine. We can, we can have a copper mining facility over here without too much trouble, um, just by having it fueled by a single... Um, a single wind turbine until we can link the network together. Let's go ahead and let that all finish. And then once we've got the, the raw resource itself, for for the early game at the very least, as I said, most things can be made by the mech it, itself with its replicator. So we only need the raw resources and we can manufacture everything else we, ourselves because we can smelt things. But later on there may be some items that are a little bit uh, more, uh, a little bit more uh, difficult for us to get. I can't rotate in both directions, so you have to be certain of where you're going to be placing this when you're rotating it. Uh, maybe there. That seems reasonable. It's not quite as good as the iron location, but it'll do for now. And let's pop down a wind turbine. I may actually be able to connect the grid. Yeah, sure. We can uh, do that. There we are. That should do very nicely. And now we have access to... That's 210 per minute. Oh, that's because we're actually running at 100% um, energy now. There are three wind turbines fueling just that one miner because this one isn't doing anything. But uh, actually, no, they are both running at full whack. So we need one and possibly half. But that is good enough for now. Okay, so the next thing up, we can do a little bit more research. And at this point, we can start branching off from the uh, the main quest to having a look at other things. And or rather, obviously, we kind of need logistics to make this at all easy for us. Storage, sorters, and conveyors. We need 10 circuit boards and 10 gears. Let's uh, get that one added. We can queue further things. Uh, so being able to smelt items would be very nice as well. And further to that, it would be very nice indeed to be able to automatically manufacture certain items, namely conveyor belts. Uh, we can also do a little bit uh, of upgrading on the mech, but I don't think that's something that we're going to get to just yet. I don't think we need to worry about that one uh, just this moment. Right now, we're going to continue to gather up resources here and pocket craft the items that we need to research. So let's uh, go ahead and have a look at that. We need 10 gears. Fairly easy to do. Let's go ahead. And the nice thing about this is when you click on the, the item, it'll show you what they can be used to make as well, which is actually quite a quite a cool uh, quite a cool um, quality of life feature there. We'll get two of these per construction, so we only need five of those, so we'll pop that down. And I shall bring you back when we finish some of our research. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful sunrise. Ah, glorious. Oh, dear. Energy is required in all mecha activities. If it is depleted, the activities will be restricted. You can click the mecha panel button at the bottom right of the screen to open the mecha panel and resupply fuel into the fuel chamber. Don't mind me, just draining, draining my battery to see how bad this goes. But now you will see why I've been so fastidious about uh, hoovering up all of the trees. You don't actually need to do it. You can quite happily build over the top of them and they'll just get demolished. But we are now completely out of power. And because of that, I'm fairly certain we can't research at all. Only basic activities are allowed and even those are very slow. Thankfully, we can indeed just load up all of the... Uh, greenery that uh, anything that we can burn into our reactor is basically a mr fusion it can take all of the random rubbish that we don't want and turn it into glorious glorious energy for us there we go you have received the sorter and the conveyor belt, indeed we have which can achieve full automation now use the conveyor belt to transport the piled up ores from the mining machine and the sorter can deliver the ores from the conveyor belt to the smelter for automatic smelting very well. On the topic of automatic smelting, we're going to need to make some more items there uh, for future research. However, we've been given 20 belts and 5 sorters. Now, you can sort of think of these as, if you're familiar with Factorio, as filter inserters. Uh, furthermore, 
we have not been given a storage. So we're actually going to go ahead and make two of these straight away before we start worrying about the 10 magnets and 10 uh, circuit boards that we're going to need for our research. There we go. Let's get all of those going. But now that we have this, we can actually start laying down some logistics. Now, it's very important to pay attention to the transport speed. There are different types of belts, different types of sorters, so on and so forth, and they have different throughputs. And these are, as with most factory automation games, very important to keep in mind. Now, the mine is one of the buildings that you can build a conveyor belt just straight out of, which is actually quite useful. All you need to do is determine the starting point and the end point of it. In addition, use the up arrow key to lift up one level and use the down arrow key to drop down one level after the conveyor belt is lifted. Press so, key as mentioned the there, we can have the ground. If you don't want the conveyor, the conveyor belt belt's quite high up. You can try holding down the shift key. Extremely distressingly, however, there are no supports. No supports. It's like, I know I said it was an 11 out of 10 game earlier, but this is clearly evidence of it being a 1 out of 5. And I am only giving it a Juan because the music is pretty good. And you get 5,000 internet points if you get that reference. Well done, you. Uh, right, there we go. <laughs> that will grate on me enormously. So don't expect me to use that feature too much because it it honestly rots a little part of uh, of my, my soul every time. But let's go ahead and place down a storage box because this is going to allow us to, uh, well, as you can imagine, you store storage, up quite a lot of which can be uh, materials used to store there. cargo. Hooray. You can manually store or use the sorter to automatically stock the cargo. Indeed we can. Now, we've also researched the smelter, which is fantastic. Uh, next on our list is um, the, we need gears and circuit boards. So let's get a couple of those going. Oh, actually, I just uh, handed over quite a lot of my uh, iron there. Let's get, we need 10 gears. So let's get those going and another five, uh, well, 10 circuit boards, but five crafts. Now, over here, we can use the sorters. The sorters are an interesting one. Every building has the multiple places it can uh, uh, connect in or out, but only one or other. As long as the supply facility and the receiving facility are bridged. Indeed. Now, one quirk here is the distance. A sorter can actually connect across a fairly uh, large distance. If I set this up, I think three is the the maximum. But later stage sorters may be able to do better. So there you go, and there we go. And there we go. Now, these are all taking in. You can click on them and set a filter, but we're not going to worry about that right now. But one thing to note, as I mentioned, there is a throughput. This can move six items a second. This can move 1.5. However, that is per grid traveled. So this one has got a throughput of 1.5. This one, well, it says uh, 1.5 items per, uh, per trip. Uh, or rather, uh, 1.5 trips per second, sorry. This one is 0 0.75 trips per second, and this is only 0 0.5 trips per second. So it takes two seconds to make a trip across the uh, most distant connection. So bear that in mind when you're building your, your sorters and such. Uh, you don't actually want to uh, waste it like that. Uh, I've done a bit of a silly by uh, doing this, but I'll quickly correct that. For, it was for demonstration purposes, clearly. It wasn't me being dumb. No, 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 no. There we go. And uh, we'll just pop this one down here and get that all being loaded up nice and eagerly. Now, because this can move six per second, we are actually going to have three sorters all working on it. And uh, that still won't quite uh, use up the entire belt, but it'll get near enough. And there we go. We've also got this set up for the copper. But another thing to be aware of with sorters is they actually do draw power. So if you don't have uh, it in the, the the power grid, then the sorters aren't going to work. So uh, do make sure to uh, plan with that in mind. So there we go. We'll pop that down. It's not exactly the uh, most efficient spread of wind power, but that's enough to start us with a uh, decent stock now of both copper and iron and as you can see we've got a got a reasonable reach with our uh with our mech now if we have a look at our construction there is only one thing that i can see so far that requires copper like copper ore and that is the copper ingot everything else needs the ingots themselves 
iron ingot requires the ore, but so do the magnets. So we actually need iron in, uh, raw ore, iron ore, for two things. Stone itself is required for two things as well, for making glass and stone. But if I click on it, you'll see the glass isn't actually used for anything yet. So uh, this is going to be a bit of an interesting one. But let's go ahead and try and set up some automated smelting. This is going to be the nice bit. And since we know that uh, copper is the uh, is the more important of the two. Actually, we're going to need a bunch more conveyor belts, aren't we? Yes, we are. Let's go ahead and build them in stacks of five so uh, we don't spend too long making all of these resources. But while all of that is being set up, let's prepare ourselves for a little bit of a smelting area. Now, I'm not going to go uh, too heavy into this, so let's uh, do something along... Let's say moving it up along here. I think that would probably be a bit of a better option for us. So let's pop that there. And once that's popped down, built we've a got a couple of these as well. So we can place a few of them. Such as iron there we go. And copper automatically. While you Indeed. want to make the raw materials and products get in and out of it autonomously, you need to use sorters and conveyor belts. We're going to need quite a lot of them. Now, I'm not sure if there is a specific throughput, uh, how fast this can pr process it. It um, doesn't really say, but less than key to let's go ahead and paste that across. To paste the next and there we go. Now, you might be uh, wondering why I've got, uh, why I've taken away one of the loaders is because with uh, three of them, they can more or less uh, take care of the entire uh, output from the mine at the moment. But I basically want this there as a buffer just so that the mine doesn't get completely uh, back stuffed and stop working. We, we've got this buffer of an entire storage chest there. But realistically, I do want it to empty out if there's any room, because ultimately I want it to be smelting rather than anything else. And we are smelting at a decent pace. We're bringing in the copper reasonably fast, though we're not completely saturating how much can be stored inside. Uh, so that seems, uh, at the moment, seems good enough. Let's go ahead and set up a uh, a conveyor belt for the ingots themselves and start offloading. There we go. There, there, and there. There we are. And now we've got the ingots being manufactured. Perfect. Glorious, in fact. Now, I could perhaps... Well, right now, power is the big, uh, big limiter. We're not going to see realistically... How much power we can actually, uh, how much we can smelt until we've got uh, got the smelters drawing 100% power. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, the same setup for iron and drop down a couple a uh, couple more wind turbines to help us with our energy needs. And I shall bring it back when we're done. And there we go. We now have storage of copper, storage of iron plates, uh, and and the relative ores, and a decent amount of energy in the system. We've got a little bit of a headroom to play around with a bit more as well. Now, given that we've got a bit of headroom, we should also set up the other smelted uh, product out of iron ore, and that will be magnets, since uh, it'll be quite nice to be able to get those all taken care of. Uh, do we need as much? Uh, no, we do not do not need even remotely as much uh, magnets as I would say that we need uh, iron ingots themselves and, and frankly the amount that we're, we're producing here we could definitely have some more smelters but i think we'll uh, just go with a uh, a safe amount of uh, of of magnet production we we'll also want a, a couple more storages we're gonna need a lot more conveyor belts i go through that rather fast and furthermore we're going to need a bit more, uh, a few more assemblers, as well. uh, sorry, uh, sorters as well. Now, with all of that taken care of, let's have a look at what we can research next. Now, we've got a couple of things that we can go for, but you'll start to see that very quickly we're going to require electronic, uh, electromagnetic matrices. And uh, you may also notice that they've got colours uh, that are a little bit familiar. We'll need energy matrices eventually. We will also need, as we progress the main story, uh, structure matrices... Gravity matrices, we will need information matrices, and ultimately all the way over to universe matrices. That's going to take us a fair old while to get down there, but as you can probably see, it all, all starts to uh, come together and follow very similar lines. Now, we can manufacture those ourselves once we've researched them, but again, it is going to be significantly more efficient 
to uh, have them made for us. Now, we do already have one assembly machine. Now, what does it require over here? We need gears and we need iron plate to be able to make the conveyors. And I think it's probably going to be one of the first things that we want to uh, have automatically being uh, manufactured for us. Now, this is not going to be pretty. I uh, I offer no apologies for the way that this is going to end up looking. Uh, you're just going to have to suck that one up, I'm afraid. For right now, since I have a very specific thing I want to build, we are simply going to set up the production for that one thing. So uh, we're going to want something to pull the, uh, the iron off this conveyor so that we can make our gears with. There we go. Plonk you there. We'll get a couple of sorters maybe just one for now that should be good enough there we are and as soon as we get the second one we can set that up but whilst we're waiting on it let's go ahead and prepare the uh the area for making magnets now we're not going to need magnets in the same kind of volume or at least i hope we don't uh as iron ingot so i'm going to restrict it to two stack stacks for now just so that we don't end up using all of our iron ore needlessly Right, we should now have another assembling machine. Let's pop you right there. Now, you are going to require, for the production of this, we're still going to need plate, and we're going to need the gears. So let's uh, go ahead and set up a transporter from here across, and from there across as well. And that will start producing the the construction, uh, sorry, the uh, conveyor belts for us. And finally... We're going to want these to go into a, a box, but I'm, I'm not really sure that we're going to need them to go anywhere else. Uh, that they're going to be used in some sort of other um, process. So for now, we're simply going to load them directly into a storage facility. There we go. We are now manufacturing our own conveyors. And that is going to be fantastically, fantastically helpful for us in, in the long run. Now, setting up uh, some magnets being produced, because they actually do get used in quite a lot of things, would seem to be a fairly good idea. And to that end, I'm actually going to say that we want this on the other side. So let's uh, move that around. When we break it down, it does give all of those materials back to us, thankfully, because that would be rather embarrassing if it did not. And there we go. We now have the production of magnets as well, or rather magnetic coils. Fantastic. However, one of the things that we're starting to see is that uh, while everything is running, we are not meeting our energy demands. Thankfully, everything just works a little bit slower rather than doesn't work at all. So we could ignore that for a while if we wanted to. Another thing I'm noticing is that uh, we have completely saturated or more or less saturated the ability for this one cargo container to hold all of the ore that we have. Now we can already address that by building vertically. This has now expanded the storage into uh, another location. This can be accessed from the bottom. Now, not all buildings can stack vertically like that, but quite a few of them can. And in the cases that they can stack vertically, usually the entire building can be accessed from the bottom. That isn't always the case, especially with uh, logistics um, buildings that deal specifically with conveyors, like uh, splitters and the likes. You can stack them on top of each other, but something going in at the bottom doesn't necessarily have access to be split out the top. It's it's more just uh, a convenient and uh, a uh, kind of neat way of organizing everything. But definitely we're going to need to get to uh, sorting out our power. But we've begun the process of automating the factory. We've got conveyor belts being made. We've also got the magnets being made, which is actually quite good, which uh, will allow us to go ahead and have a look at research. Now, the next things that we're going to want, the electronic matrix is probably going to be where we need to go, because realistically now, everything is going to start needing that for future production. I think there may be one or two more things that don't. No, actually, pretty much everything does at this point. So, yes, electromagnetic matrix is the next port of call. We're going to need 10 magnetic coils and 10 circuit boards. And honestly, the circuit boards may be the next candidate for our automation. I can already just... Oh, well, I've already got 10 of them there. That's fine then, I suppose. I can drop these off, though. And uh, you can happily drop them into this area. It's just it uh, won't fill it up any further than that. So we need the circuit boards. Let's go ahead and just make 10 of these ourselves, though I, I don't have the uh, iron plates for that right now, thankfully. I can just grab a bunch of iron plates from there. There we go, and that will, can, that will uh, finish off the manual research uh, for us. 
Now, how are we going to be making the electronic circuit boards? We need both iron plate and copper plate for that. Okay, well, uh, we've got a little bit down here. We could just bring the iron plate down and have them uh, line up if we really wanted to. I'm more of a fan of having the two running parallel, though. Uh, so let's go ahead and extend this out a little bit further and have our copper at this point branch up. If I can get it underneath and then follow along. There we go. There we are. We've already got the uh, the electromagnetic matrix researched. And that has also given us access to a science building. Now, the interesting thing with these science buildings, let's pop one down just for the sake of uh, looking at it. There you go. Now, this is going to draw power, matrix but you can have two different modes, make making the matrix or researching research using them. That require them to unlock. The super matrices are the source code of the center brain for maintaining the home world. You can upload as many super matrices to the center brain as possible. You can be benefit to unlock more actual world technologies by operating the home world simultaneously. And I would very like to be benefit. Uh, so, as I was saying, you can either have it producing the matrix or using the matrix for research. Realistically, we want this one to be producing the matrix, so we're going to need the copper circuit boards. Uh, sorry, the, the circuit boards, rather, and the magnetic coils. So, at this point, we're going to start wanting to draw out from here. And uh, ideally, from whatever we're using over here. In fact, to that end, it may well be to our benefit to have this in a slightly different position then. Uh, so, let's go ahead and redesign this a little bit. And we'll have that draw down and up, like so. Thankfully, when you delete a belt, you also get its contents back. Uh, but we are going to delete that straight up and move that instead over here. Now, it is going to mean that we take a little longer to move the magnetic coils in there, but I think that should be fine. So we'll just have that load across to the magnetic coils. And we're going to do exactly the same on the other side for the circuit boards. I think that would probably be a wise move. Now, sadly, I can't tell it to queue up the construction from the uh, the build queue. That Honestly, that would be a really, really cool... Um, really cool uh, little uh, quality of life uh, saving there. I would very, very much like that, but uh, we're going to have to wait on that one. But with that done, we should actually be able to finish this and just pop this in position to make use of these glorious things. Uh, sure, we can pop one there. We are going to need a second one, though. So we can already... Oh, no, we're going to need to grab a couple of these magnets then. Grab that. We can already start production of a second. There we are. Right, let's go ahead and pop down our production facility. We are going to want to line it up because, of course, we do. There we go. And now we're going to want to make use of all of these. So there, there, and then finally load it off on that side. Of course, we're going to need to give it A, a recipe, and B, some power. Now, thankfully, we do have a couple of these left. Uh, let's pop one down there. And the last one can go over here and will actually allow us to get all of the uh, all of the sorters working as well. So that's actually fantastic there. Right, finally, let's get these moving up now. Hmm, I'm actually going to want this to be in slightly different position, I think. Yeah, probably. That being said, we... Well... Yeah, I'm going to want to move this. Look, okay, I'm going to be finicky about it. Let me... There we are. We can have that right there, and that should work fine. Uh, let's bring the conveyor belts down. Now, I can do all of this with just uh, function keys. The reason why I'm not is some of my function keys are actually tied to my recording hotkey. So before you, you, you query why I'm not making use of this as much as I could, it's because I would need to rebind the keys. And, and right now, it's it's not that much of an issue. Later on, I probably will. But uh, for the time being, that is the reason why I'm not uh, I'm not using the function keys as well I could. Well, let's set that up. There we go. Now, we're going to want one of these right next to it. Now, I could just set this up to happily draw directly from this building, but I think having uh, having the blue signs running out of the building on the on the far side is a better way of doing it myself. So, let's get that set up as well. But we are getting somewhere now. I'm going to need a lot more power. So, Let's just have this make two at a time. I think that's going to be easier. And it's certainly going to allow me to uh, stockpile resources a little bit better. Let me grab... Oh, well, almost a whole stack of... Wow, that can store 200 at a time. 
Well, actually, since we're using this for research, I'm not going to... Well, no. I think let's uh, let's only give it one line so it doesn't use everything up, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. I, I'm kind of planning for the future a little bit with that one, I think. Uh, let's have these offloading there and there. And then this one can draw it all in like so. Perfect. Absolutely wonderful. Now, if I want to do, I could also have this one producing as well. But for the time being, this one can just research for me. There we go. Research set. Let's have this one uh, deposit there and draw in on this side. And just restrict access there. There we are. Marvellous. Now, this obviously needs to be given something to research. So let's go ahead and do that. What do we want to research right now? We can have smelting purification. Which will allow us to smelt silicon ore, energetic graph, uh, graphene, is it? Uh, no, graphite. And high purity silicon. We can have steel smelting, probably what we're going to go for. We could also get an improved logistics system, which will give us the four direction splitter. We've got thermal power, which would allow us... Actually, power is, is a big issue for us right now. So I kind of think that maybe going for this would be a, a wise move. Power generation facility that uses combustibles as fuel has a conversion rate between energy output and fuel consumed. So we could probably set up a coal mine to take care of that. So I think that's probably going to be uh, what we want to set up our first uh, our first use of our research uh, for. Uh, let's go ahead and get another one of these just down here, just to allow us to power this building. There we go. That should, one would hope, start researching. There we are. Okay, so we're now producing the matrices. We are loading them into the factory. That is brilliant. We are going to need so much more power, though. And as you can imagine, we can't just dot these right next to each other. Even this is, is losing a little bit of efficiency because of how close they are. But, uh, oh my lord, we're going to need quite a lot of power in the very near future. So those uh, that coal mine over there may well be, uh, be our savior. But well, I'll go ahead and I'll pop down a couple more of these just here and there. And it does make a bit of a nice pattern. Let's let's be honest with ourselves. It does look quite quite cool. And then we want another one just down there. There we go. And that should help out a little bit. That actually looks fantastic. I am very pleased with the way that looks. But let's go and check on our energy consumption now. And we will see how things stand. We're actually standing at, a, at um, decent enough. It's dipping dipping down a little bit, but for the most part, it seems to be doing an okay job of things but i think that's where we're going to be wrapping off of the episode i think it's a good cutting off point now if you did enjoy today's episode and would like to see more episodes of dyson sphere program then do consider leaving a like on the video or a comment down below letting me know and we'll see whether this uh, can blossom into its own series or whether it'll stay as a bit more of a of a first taste either way i really do hope you enjoyed this episode and will be joining me for the next that's going to be it from me and our very Pacific Rim themed mecha here. So until next time, and as always, do take care.